Uh, we're going to get to, to work with those in just a little bit, but before we have to see the theory for that. Um, all right, so on Friday, uh, for those of you that weren't here, uh, we talked about homework number 10. Uh, please, I uploaded the video today. Uh, I'm giving you there some hints about how to solve the, the homework, which is you on Friday. It's, it's not too difficult, and also all the material uh, in the class notes in the book is already uploaded in the internet, uh, in YouTube. So, okay, so today we're going to talk about linear elastic fracture mechanics. Uh, basically, we are concerned here with two problems. We want to know, we want to calculate what is the width of the fracture when we have a given pressure inside the fracture. And also we want to calculate what is the stress intensity at the tip in order to see if that fracture is going to propagate or not. Something that, that is called fracture toughness. And, uh, and that, that's what we're gonna do today, okay? But we need to start uh, with a simple problem uh, before we go to solving this entire couple problem. All right, so let's get started with this. Uh, this is called the Griffith line crack problem and it involves computing uh, displacements and stresses around a crack which is just a line. Uh, basically in every problem of uh, fracturing we're going to have a medium we did, remember, we did something very similar for the wellbore uh, that I'm drawing in a square, but it means an infinitely large medium. And inside, now, instead of having a circular cavity, we have a very slender crack, which here I'm just showing and drawing just like a line. In this infinite medium, we're going to have a stress that acts in this case we're going to assume it's perpendicular to the fracture and this is the minimum principal stress and we know the fractures usually open perpendicular to the minimum principal stress so that follows the rule that we said before and inside the fracture we're going to have a pressure which in this case we're gonna call PF. All right, so I I really want this fracture to be open, okay? So if it's opening, and let's imagine for the moment that it's, it is not propagating, is the pressure in the, has the pressure in the fracture have to be larger or lower than the far field, uh, least principal stress larger. larger right so pf has to be larger than than s3 and that's what we call net pressure the pressure in the fracture minus the least principal stress and this is called p net and is equal to pressure in the fracture minus minimum principal stress. If the net pressure is positive, uh, that means that uh, that fracture uh, is open and it might be propagating or not. That's something we're gonna see in a bit. If the, pressure, if the net pressure is negative, that means that the far field stress is larger than the uh, pressure in the fracture. So, uh, Solving this problem with uh, fracture pressure and minimum principal stress in the far field is identical to solving this problem if we assume linear elasticity of uh, solving a problem with no stresses around but just a net pressure. That's why it's so useful the concept of net pressure because we can get rid of all the other uh, surrounding stresses and we just use the net pressure in there. 
<coughs> so remember the net pressure is going to be the value of equal to the value of the pressure in the fracture minus the minimum principal stress all right so uh, let's now do a little bit of math and we're going to solve the equations uh, that allow us to compute fracture width and fracture intensity and for that uh, this is going to be the same square but now I'm going to put a coordinate system where this is x this is y I'm going to assume that the fracture is already open and and it's, it is not propagating so this is going to be the tip of the fracture and inside I have a pressure <coughs> that in this case I'm going to assume as a constant value P0 so uh, here the pressure as a function of x is just going to be a, a constant value and my objective is to solve the displacements in direction y and also the stresses around the fracture for example uh, somewhere over here remember that all of this is a solid okay and the fracture inside is filled with the fluid and for now we will assume that there is no porosity in the solid okay uh, so how do you feel about solving this equation <coughs> that allows us to solve a general problem of elasticity? Do you think that's something that we could do, spend a few lectures on? If you remember that was in Navier's equation and it's equation of elasticity uh, linear elasticity where these are constants these are derivatives and these are displacements uh, well we're not going to solve that equation okay but because it's going to take a lot of work a lot of integrals and we, we don't want to do that uh, but fortunately for us uh, there was this gentleman Griffith who solved that problem for us and found the equations that are a solution of this problem and in a medium with a given Young modulus and Poisson ratio with a given uh, constant pressure and a fractured half length equal to C uh, he found that the displacement as a function of X here in the fracture so y equal to zero uh, was equal to the equation I'm writing, I'm writing right now anyone remembers what is this modulus that one appeared in the equation of the tectonics strains and calculation of stresses and it is called a plane strain modulus <coughs> and basically we're solving this uh, problem in two dimensions it assumes that the fracture is infinitely large in a direction perpendicular to the paper that's the assumption and uh, and that that's why we need this plane strain modulus which is the Young modulus divided 1 minus Poisson ratio squared all right so uh, from this equation um, you can tell me already for this fracture 
what is going to be the maximum width of the fracture. What is going to be the maximum width at x equal to what? To zero, right? And so, what is going to be the width the maximum width so here uh, this is going to be equal to 0 right so this is just going to be C which is a fracture half length and notice that this is a displacement from the center towards the wall of the fracture so you want to get the width you have to multiply that times 2 so the width of the fracture is going to be four times the pressure in the fracture times the half length divided by the plane strain modulus. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Because it tells you that the fracture width is proportional to pressure. The higher the pressure, the, the higher the width. Proportional to the half length of the fracture, and that's very important because it means like for the same pressure, the width is going to be bigger as the fracture length increases. So the compliance of the fracture, it depends on the width, of, on the length of the fracture. The longer the fracture, the softer it's going to be. And inversion is proportional to the constraint modulus because the stiffer the medium, the more difficult it's going to be to open a fracture uh, here. All right, so uh, this equation is valid for the fracture only. So x going from 0 uh, to z, okay? So uh, that's supposed to be a c over there. And what is going to be the fracture width at x equal to c? Zero. Zero. Makes sense, right? Also notice that we here we have a square root. And that means that this is an equation of an ellipse. So according to this theory, the fracture width uh, is, is going to have the shape of an ellipse. OK, so that's half of the solution of the problem. Now let's go to stresses in direction y. What is the stress at the wall of the fracture in direction y? Immediately on the wall of the fracture, what do you think the stress sigma yy is going to be? This, this is similar to what we saw um, for the wellbore. Just it's going to be the net pressure. In this case, P, P naught, right? And uh, at the wall of the well, at the wall of the fracture, the pressure. In order to balance this pressure, you need stress equal to that pressure at the wall of the fracture, everywhere in here. However, uh, that, that's that's a trivial solution, okay? What we're interested in is in the solution of stress for x larger than c. And in that case, what Griffith found is that the solution it is something like this. Also involves square roots and This is valid for x uh, larger than c. So tell me what is now the stress at the tip. So uh, at the tip, that will be for x equal to c, right? Infinity. And do you think that we're going to be able to solve that problem? Uh, 
Um, we, unfortunately, we cannot deal with infinite quantities. And what this equation tells you is that as you approach the tip, uh, the stress tends to infinity. And then it uh, goes down. And also, this is going to be a tensile stress. So we're going to add uh, there a, a negative sign. Remember that we assume that tension is negative in geomechanics. <coughs> OK. Um, so the important no thing to notice here is that we cannot use tensile strength anymore to tell if the, the rock is going to fracture or not. Because our equations are telling us that the stress is infinity. And infinity is going to be always larger than whatever value we put. So instead of using that, we're going to use something else. And we're going to use something which is called a stress intensity factor. And it is defined, and it's named Ki. And it is defined as a limit. Do you guys remember limits from calculus? Probably you didn't use much of those, but this is a, an example, an instance in which we're going to use a limit. So the fracture intensity is going to be the limit of 2 pi r, with where r is the distance from the tip, square root of that, times stress as r tends to zero from the right. That means <coughs> as r goes from positive values towards zero. And as you get towards that point and to infinity, now the product, notice that r tends to zero, right? As we get to zero. And sigma y y tends to infinity. Well, you can work this limit at home if, uh, if you need help just let me know but you just have to put this equation in here and you have to to do some move some terms so they cancel as uh, r tends to zero and you're going to see that this general equation for our particular case of a constant pressure is going to be equal to the pressure in the fracture times pi times the fracture half length square root of that for our particular problem. So and now this is not an, uh, a value that tends to infinity. It's a finite amount. And it tells us, tells us that this fracture intensity is proportional to the pressure in the fracture, which makes a lot of sense. But also, very important, is proportional to the length of the fracture. So the longer the fracture, the higher the stress intensity is going to be for the same pressure. Yes? How did the negative sign disappear? Uh, I, f I forgot the negative sign. Okay. But well, it, I it is over there, right? Uh -huh. uh, Usually, these fracture intensities, we deal with those as uh, positive quantities, OK? Uh, so if, if you really want to make me respect the signs here, let's do this. But uh, usually, we, we those fracture intensities, we use them as, as positive quantities. OK, and now that we can calculate fracture intensity, we can compare that to what is called fracture toughness. So fracture intensity is something that, that you calculate, and it depends on the length and on the pressure inside your fracture. Fracture toughness. is the maximum fracture intensity that a given material can support. And it's a property of the material. 
is independent of the fracture length of, of the pressure, it's just a property of the material. And that's what we're going to measure now, okay? Uh, so before we run a test for um, measuring fracture toughness of, of these two rocks, these limestone rocks, uh, I brought the, the chopsticks, um, we're going to use now uh, to have an idea about fracture intensity of fracture toughness. So, so all of you have the chopsticks? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Well, you really broke the chopsticks. You, 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 need, you need the chopsticks unbroken. So if you, you need chopsticks, they're all stuck. I have a lock, so a bit. Please, please. 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 Very disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll try. Well, but um, I think we're gonna have to leave that for some other time. But okay, next time okay. you go to. Uh, to have some Asian food, Chinese food. <laughs> And you get your chopsticks, which are still unbroken. I am going to ask you to do the following test. So usually, you get the chopsticks, uh, which are which are still joined somewhere over there, right? And then you have to break them, right? So when you get some chops chopsticks, uh, which are still not, not broken, try to, to break them by, by pulling apart from somewhere close to where they are joined. And you will see that it's a lot harder than to open them when, or to break them when you open them from the tips. And what that is telling you is something very similar to this. Is that for the same force, the longer the fracture or the longer the distance from the tip, the easier it is to break the chopsticks in two. So p please try that. And you will see that even if you're trying to pull the chopsticks from somewhere around here, probably you won't be able to break them unless you are you're very strong, as I am. <laughs> if you go further, it will be much easier to open them. And um, for fracture, that's very important because it's, it tells you that fractures are more difficult to propagate when they are short, but when they are long enough, it's much easier to break them, much, much easier. Even with the small net pressures, the fracture is going to propagate and it's going to care much about the uh, toughness of the rock. Uh, so, um, let me see if I forget anything. I wanted to say something, but I forgot. Uh, okay, let me explain you what's going on here with this superscript number one in Roman numbers. That superscript ne means opening mode because there are actually three uh, ways of opening a fracture one is this one which is opening which is opening the two faces relatively to each other and that's usually what happens with fluid driven fractures that by means of pressure open the faces of the fracture but there are two <coughs> other ways and those are related to shear. One is if I have the chopsticks like this and I do open them like that, and that's called uh, in-plane shear, and that's gonna be K2, is a different one. And then there, there is another one, 
which is called K3, which is this one. Well, actually, this one is, is the one in plane. If you were to try to to break it like this, and you will see it's a lot more difficult to break break the chopsticks like this than to do it out of plane like that. But you could propagate these fractures either uh, open mode, which is going to be K1, or in shear. Let me show you a picture to uh, clarify that. And then, fortunately, I have a second toy here that we, we're going to use. But uh, I'm so so disappointed about chopsticks. Uh, uh, Alex did the experiment at uh, at the meeting uh, some time ago, and it, it was very good, right? It was. Uh, but uh, okay, I'll see if I get the chopsticks uh, later on. Uh, okay, so. So probably now you can try catching some flies with uh, those chopsticks. <laughs> uh, probably you guys, you, ne you never watch Karate Kid, right? But I strongly recommend Karate Kid, especially the new series. And uh, this is what I was meaning, okay? So uh, here we have Mode, mode one, opening mode, which is the one done by fluids, and in-plane shear and out-of-plane shear. So those are the three ways that you could propagate a fracture in, uh, in solids. Okay, well, since uh, we weren't able to, to do the chopstick example, uh, we're gonna have to go ahead with the real test to measure fracture toughness in rocks which is the semicircular bending test. Uh, so uh, what we do in this test, and uh, please guys pay attention because you're gonna have to write a two page maximum summary of this and submit for Jeffrey to, to grave, okay, uh, of this test. So basically, what's going on? We're going to get one of these samples uh, to be tested. And the test consists in loading a sample with already a notch in it, this is the notch, and in our case, we're gonna apply a force in this direction. We're gonna put two rollers and they're going to react, both of them, with half of the maximum force. And this is going to be the length of the notch this is going to be the radius of the sample. This is the length. And this is the distance between the spacers or between the rollers. So from what we said before, uh, the longer the notch, what's going to happen, happen with the maximum force required to break the rock? It's going to get smaller, right? The longer I make this notch, the uh, smaller is going to be this uh, force to break them. And fracture toughness from this test is going to be equal to the maximum force times square root of the length of the notch times pi divided 2 times RL. Okay, don't panic. I have, <laughs> I have everything under, co under control. So, by the way, uh, 
Um, by the way, guys, uh, I might not have everything under control. <laughs> no, no, th there you go. Okay, this is the question. So, I, I have, uh, already I have online everything up to what we're going to see uh, today, but or, although I have written the, the, the next part, it's not still uh, online. I'll try to, to upload that uh, tonight. But what we have to do is uh, now to utilize that equation in order to, uh, to calculate the fracture toughness of these two samples, OK? So I'm going to do this over here. And uh, now we have two displays. Probably you can see the numbers. OK, this is, this is going to this is gonna be the force, OK? So basically, I need to put this sample in here. And uh, you just have to keep an eye on the on the force until what is the maximum, okay? All right. So now the sample is loaded, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna load it slowly, and uh, and you have to see what is the maximum load. Let me tell you a few more things. Uh, let me see if I can recover the this. This one's still recording. Yes. So. Uh, what sample is that? Okay, that sample has a radius of 19 millimeters. It has a notch length A of 4 millimeters. The thickness of the sample L capital is 13 millimeters. And that's all you need uh, for now. OK? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load it. Uh, please, please be quiet, because you, you're going to hear a noise when you break OK? What's going on? Okay, now it's increasing, right? So eight pounds, ten pounds. Okay, before I continue, how much do you think it's gonna take? Forty pounds. Still like prices, right? So it's gonna be definitely less than when you were doing an unconfined compression. Some of those days, it took like thousand pounds. Because now we have a notch, we have we have a flow in there that's gonna make <coughs> like the rock kind of weaker. Okay? So okay, I'll continue. <laughs> so ju just you know <coughs> just think about the number in your head uh, and we'll see what is the maximum. Oh, it's already forty pounds quite a bit. But please 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 be quiet, okay? Seventy pounds. You think it's gonna take? Eighty pounds. There you go. I didn't see the value. What? Ninety-three. Okay. Okay. Use a value to. Now compute the toughness, okay? And uh, use the equation, uh, convert all your, your lengths to, to meters. That's gonna be easier. 
and convert the force to newtons. So 93 pounds converted to newtons, okay? And then, then you're gonna, you should get the value which is an order of 100,000, okay? And I'll try to, to get this to work again. Yeah. What is uh, yi? Yi is a geometric factor and it's going to be equal to All right, so this was sample B84. It's a sample of Indiana limestone. And I told you that R was equal to 19 milli millimeters. A was four millimeters, L is 13 millimeters, and with those values, uh, this is just a geometric factor that again comes from solving uh, that uh, Navier's equation with inverted triangles, and this one is equal to 4.5, no units, and P max was equal to, you told me 93 pounds, right? How is that in Newtons? Okay. So 413 Newton. Um, what is the toughness of this rock? Don't worry about the units now, just give me the, the number, but you have to use meters and newtons, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the units in a bit. Four hundred eighteen thousands. Every Everyone gets that? 418 thousands. Okay, so you, you get a value? <coughs> Anyone disagrees? Yeah, I got 400. 400? 22, 18. Yeah. Well, let, let's, let's say 20, okay? I'm going to go with something in the middle. Uh, all right, so notice the units of, of that. We have a Newton times a length square root 
divided a meter square. So we can simplify that, and usually the units of uh, fracture toughness are given in pressure or stress. In this case, uh, I make it an MPA, so I, I divide by a million, and I get 0.42 MPA times square root of meter. And those are the units of fracture toughness. <coughs> kind of weird units, but that's how it is. And also, you could convert this to PSI inch square root of that. That's another uh, unit used for KIC. And notice uh, the fracture shape. It is, it is not perfectly planar, and if you look inside, it is not a perfect plane, but it is uh, a little bit rough. And actually, if you were to <coughs> use a microscope and follow what's going on in here, uh, you will see that the usually the fractures like to go through the weakest points of the, of the rock. And usually that's when you have the largest porosity. So you see it's a rough fracture. It's not a perfectly planar uh, fracture. And fracture roughness is very important because sometimes that can, uh, sometimes can be good because if, when it closes, it doesn't match perfectly. Then you're going to have a residual width. And uh, but some other times it may also uh, scream propant, which is, which is not good. All right, so let's see. We have we have five more minutes, and uh, I think I'm not going to have time to go to the next topic. But I like to do. Let, let's do one one more test, okay? So we're going to test sample A83, and it's very similar. Remember, you have to put a report about this. Two pages maximum. And this, this is 4.4 .4 millimeters. <laughs> and again, this is going to be 4.5 Pmax. And we're going to load again. Any volunteer wants to make the, the new test? What? You, you need to come uh, to, to the front, okay? No one? Well, why do I give you extra points? Fair one raising his or her gun. No one? Extra points? I, I said extra points. Okay. <laughs> Miss K, come over here. All right. So you have to. Uh, so place it wrong and then. Put the spacers and let, let me unload it for you. Move it down. Uh, all right. Try see see if it fits over there. Put the put these where? Yes. Uh, there. And then the rock in the middle. Oh, okay. Okay. Try try to make it fit exactly in the middle. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah, that looks good, right? But uh, it's not exactly. Okay. But, but go slowly, okay? Until it touches. Uh, you, you'll see, you'll see there. Like okay, go, go ahead. All right, wait. Now, now take the spacer out of here. Yeah. Move a little bit, all right. Okay, guys, okay, be, be, be quiet, okay? We're, we're starting the test. So, okay, please, please go ahead. Um, I'm gonna take... Uh, wait, wait a minute, I'm gonna take a slow motion video. Oops. 
Okay, guys, now how much do you think we're going to get to in load? Previous one? It's the same. Yeah, like Excuse me. The length is a little bit larger, but we'll see. Okay, go, go ahead. Yeah, 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 go much slower now then. <coughs> this requires go. What was the value? 114. Okay. Well, thank you, Miss Kay. Okay, so now you, you can calculate the fracture toughness again. Look, this one was a, a lot more irregular than the other one. And you, you see how the fracture deviated there a little bit from the main trend. Okay, uh, so you're going to calculate the value and uh, you will report that in your, in your report. And and this is how you measure fracture toughness, okay? Uh, typical values of fracture toughness for rocks go from 0 0.05 to more or less maximum 2 MPA square root of meter. So here with this Indiana, Indiana limestone, we had a more or less moder moderately strong rock. There are some other rocks that can be uh, a little bit uh, tougher uh, to break. So if you know the fracture toughness of your rock and if you can calculate the fracture intensity from equations uh, similar to this one, uh, you can calculate uh, or you can say if it's going to uh, propagate or not. So we just have one more minute. And I, I have one example here in the notes that we can, we can work on. So I don't want to show the solution. OK, let's work on this problem, guys. I like that you tell me the solution uh, next time we meet. So we have a, a 2D fracture with a fracture half length of 10 meters, a pressure of 20.5 megapascals inside the medium with a stress of 20 megapascals and these properties. I want you to tell me the maximum width and the stress intensity at the tip. Okay? I'll see you on Wednesday. Let, okay, let, let's see Wednesday. Let's see Wednesday. Let's see Wednesday. If, if you guys need chopsticks, just, just take them, okay? I, I don't need them anymore <laughs> since they're not what I want.